Hi, everybody. So today we are going to learn about a new feature in C++, new to us, called operator overloading. Operator overloading. So we learned about function overloading before, um, but what operating operator overloading is, is we can tell, we can teach the compiler what operators like plus, times, minus, less than, even like square brackets or crazy things like that. Um, mean for our own types. So when we make a new type in C++, like with a struct definition, we're not just limited to now we have to write functions that take in an argument, like come up with our names for functions. We can actually overload these operators, meaning we can teach, uh, we can have a new meaning of that operator, a new function that gets called when that gets used on, on our own types. So it's another example, and we'll continue to see more and more on this about um, how C++ has a much more powerful type system and is able to do um, richer things and, and allow us to program more simply by making like the function calls and other things sort of aware of what types you use when you call those functions. So let's see this in action. This is an example that we're going to introduce here and, and use uh, for the next few videos. So it's a program that just reads in a bunch of monetary values and adds them up. So there's a struct that we're going to use with dollars and cents. Notice again that we don't have to use the type def struct or anything in C++. You can just, just say struct amount, and then amount is the name of that type that we can use from there on in. Uh, so this opens a file to read in. This is all kind of using these um, C S D D I O functions that we know and love. This is making a new array of size 100. So it's using that new operator that we learned about to allocate an array on the heap. And of course, there's a delete down here to deallocate it. And then it's uh, reading everything in, uh, setting each field of the struct like we want. And then when we get to the end, it's going to have another loop to go through and add it up. So right now, the way I'm adding it up is by having a total cent amount and uh, summing that up and then doing a division in mod uh, on this printf line. Let's see how this works. I have a file called stacks.txt. I can say make money. That's kind of fun. And if I run this with stacks.txt, I get some answer which uh, is not actually quite right. So think about the way that we printed this out. We printed the dollars dot cents. So this is actually 545.03. There's a couple different ways that we could fix this, but um, I'm going to use a trick with uh, printf that you might not have seen before. You can put a uh, number before D, so like two means with two, and the zero means pad it with zeros. So percent zero two D means print out this integer, always print it out with two spaces and with leading zeros. Um, so now if I compile that and run it, then it'll print out the amount like we want. But we're supposed to learn about operator overloading. So let's see how we could overload the plus operator so we don't have to kind of do this math down here in main. And we can um, do the logic of how to add two amounts in one place. So the way that we do oper operator overloading in C++ is we make a special function with a special name. And so the name of the function that we're going to make is the word operator and then like the name of the operator. So operator plus, in this case, is going to be um, defining how two amounts will get added in our program. So what should the arguments be? Well, they should be two amounts, amount a1 and amount a2. And the return type should be another amount. We add two amounts up and we get another amount out. So this is really just going to be a normal function, but because of this special name, that's going to tell the compiler to call our function whenever we use the plus operator with two amounts in our programs. And so let's define this down here. What we'll do is we'll make an amount for the sum and we'll say sum dot dollars equals a one dot dollars plus a two dot dollars and sum.sense equals, okay, like this, makes sense. 
That was a good pun. And now we can rewrite this for loop to add everything up as an amount. We don't have to worry about like converting to cents and then back to dollars and cents. So I can just say amount total. So I'll start out with zero dollars and zero cents. Then I'll have my for loop. But instead of doing this um, times 100 stuff, I'll just say total equals total plus money index i. This is adding up two things which both have type amount. And then at the end, I should just be able to print out, instead of having to do this division and mod, I should be able to just print total dot dollars and total dot cents. So the important thing here is that this line, total plus money I, that would be a total compiler error in C, and there'd be no way that you could fix it other than just finding some other function and not, not using plus. But in C++, we can teach the compiler, we can make a function which gets called whenever we do an addition on our own types. So by doing this plus operator here, it's actually gonna call our own function that we just wrote the operator plus um, to add those things up. So let's see how this works. Hopefully it compiles. Great. And let's see if it worked. Kind of. So what's wrong with this output? Well, we forgot to account for the fact that the cents might go past 100 when we're adding things up. Okay, but we can deal with that now. And, and the place that we would deal with it is right here in this operator plus function that we wrote. So we can just make a simple if statement, like if sum.cents is greater than 100. If we went past 100, then I will add a new dollar and I will subtract a hundred cents. Okay, so we just increase the dollars and subtract a hundred cents. And we're gonna do this every time it gets added up so we don't have to do like any mod or anything at the end. And now this should work and it gives the actual correct answer that we wanted. And so again, the thing to point out is that by writing this function with a special name operator plus, we're actually able to redefine how the plus operator should work for our own type. And we could put anything that we want in here. Um, the compiler would just faithfully run this code and return whatever we return.